I have written something I call a philosophical oratorio. I wrote this about two years ago. I performed it for the first time incomplete. Uh, I had finished about three quarters of it and performed it at a private party. And I had to explain to that audience that I hadn't solved all the world's problems in time for that evening's performance. <laughs> but I'm pleased to announce that for tonight's, I have. <laughs> I'd like to ask three questions. Ask what they mean to you. What is so? How do you know? And so, what should you do? The answers are elusive. It's quite a lot to chew. What is so? How do we know? And so, what should we do? Philosophers refer to them like this without apology. One is metaphysics, and two, epistemology. And number three is ethics, or the science of morality. These questions hold the key to man's relation to reality. My object is to deal with them in poetry and song. One is truth, one is proof, and one is right and wrong. Your answers guide your thoughts and deeds, your philosophy whether he knows it or not some people fancy philosophy some think it isn't so hot theirs they believe is to follow it not to agree or oppose their only choice is to swallow it wincing and holding their nose most people feel that philosophy is something they can't understand so they absorb their philosophy at hand, letting it dictate propriety, dictate what's false and what's true, leaving the job to society, as if society knew. Why should you study philosophy with all there is to pursue? Simply because your philosophy underlies all that you do. Why bother checking your premises? Why should you make that a goal? Premises can be your nemesis if they're not under control. What is regarded as knowledge is garbage we've got to outgrow. That which is taught in our colleges ain't necessarily so. Let me review for the curious what the philosophers thought. Don't be surprised if you're furious that this is still being taught. Philosophers are men who think in purest fundamentals, like Buddha and Confucius, who confuse the Orientals. They taught by means of paradox that man is meant to suffer, that life and death are just the same, except that life is tougher. 
While Thales taught in ancient Greece and called his school Milesian, the weeper Heraclitus taught that things have no cohesion. Pythagoras decided mathematics would cohere him and ran around reciting his Pythagorean theory. And then there came Parmenides and Zeno of Elia, who said there's no such thing as change. A rather strange idea. Empedocles, Leucippus, and Democritus came next. They came to bring enlightenment. They left the world perplexed. The students of Protagoras were led across the greens with sophomoric wisdom, like ends justify the means. The irony of Socrates up in his ivory tower is that he sought the truth of life, yet drank a deadly flower. Now, Plato saw another world and thought it was ideal. The physical does not exist. The mental world is real. But Aristotle tried to take those separate worlds and fuse them. He formed the laws of logic, though he didn't always use them. And hedonistic happiness was hailed by Epicurus. He meant in moderation, though, he hastened to assure us. And Stoics, led by Zeno, came, and skeptics, led by Pyrrho, they claimed we can't know anything. That added up to zero. Then Philo borrowed Plato and applied him to religion. Plotinus, too, and Augustine, who added just a smidgen. And mysticism called itself superior to reason. And anyone who disagreed was put to death for treason. Throughout the Middle Ages, there was philosophic dryness until Aristotle's work was rediscovered by Aquinas. So, Renaissance philosophers began to do their jobs, a dearth of new ideas from a plethora of snobs. Around the attributes of man, they started building fences, like senses without reasoning and reason without senses. I think, therefore I am, began the thinking of Descartes. Spinoza spun his theories from a geometric chart. We learn by pure sensation, offered Berkeley, Locke, and Hume, that knowledge is conceptual was too much to assume. This mind and body separation Leibniz just adored, but pre-established harmony just struck a minor chord. Philosophy and science split. Now which way would they go? Become the noble savage, came the answer from Rousseau. Which brings us to the thinker most subjectivist in slant. Can people stand to hear his name? I promise you, I can't. <laughs> we owe the categorical imperative to him, which simply means morality is nothing more than whim. Self-sacrifice commanded Schopenhauer, Mill, and Bentham with reasons so preposterous, I can't believe they meant them. Now, Hegel held a view of man which Hitler found poetic. But this was only logical. His logic was synthetic. That certain men are supermen was preached by Friedrich Nietzsche. This concept reached the Nazis too, who found it ginger peachy. The name for altruism was contributed by Comte. With altruism, Engels, Marx, and Lenin left us swamped. Oh, some think it means benevolence and looking after Gramps. I ask you, how benevolent? Our concentration camps. America gave Pearson, James, and Dewey an ovation. And pragmatism turned into progressive education. You've heard of existentialists like Kierkegaard and Sartre? Futility and loneliness are all that they impart. From Heidegger to Wittgenstein, to Whitehead, Moore, and Reed, from Buddha to the present, no two thinkers have agreed. 
But all these men are unified in two ways, I submit. They all were great philosophers. They all were full of shit. Several people asked me if this was a family show. <laughs> Philosophy is not as complex as they'd have us think. It's justifying errors that produces such a stink. But let's not think that just because philosophers were boring, the subject of philosophy must not be worth exploring. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Man needs a frame of reference and a moral code to guide him. But man just can't make head or tail of what has been supplied him. I say, let's start all over. Keep the best, but dump the worst. Let's start from scratch. Let's prove each point. Let's just take first things first. The most important thing to me is me. <laughs> that much is true. And so I guess the most important thing to you is you. But then again, I'm not the first thing ever to occur. My mother came before me and my, her mother before her. My father had a father and his father had a dad. So don't misunderstand me when I say, We've all been had. <laughs> cause and effect, cause and effect. I'm the result of cause and effect. One of the ways that all things connect is by the law. an effect, cause and effect. There can be no cause without an effect. Effects without causes would be incorrect. So says the law of cause and effect. The cause of a bird is an egg. The cause of a bird is an egg. I'm not just pulling your leg or trying to be absurd. The cause of a tree is a sea. The cause of a sea is a tree. Something must antecede before a thing can be. See? Cause and effect. Cause and effect, you needn't agree, you needn't object, but things can be thought about in this respect. Respect the law, the law, respect the law, the law of cause and effect. If, if, if every effect has a cause, and each cause had a previous cause, this theory appears to have flaws on which we would do well to pause. Because if everything must have a cause, then where did it all begin? The problem involved in this law is the problem of origin. 
Way back before my parents, my uncles, or my aunts. Way back before McDonald's and the world of high finance. Way back before psychiatry and governmental grants. Way back before Burt Bacharach, Burt Convy, or Burt Lance. Way back before all man-made things like cars and Gucci pants. Way back before Khomeini, Edwin Muskie, Cyrus Vance. Way back before the animals, way back before the plants. Way back before the world began, there was a great expanse. The universe, the universe, of what does it consist? The universe is what we call all objects that exist. The universe is outer space and galaxies of stars and little things called planets such as Venus, Earth, Mars. The universe is everything, including you and me, and subatomic particles impossible to see. You cannot go outside it, or above it, or below. The universe is all. Where else to go? The universe is not a place. All places are in it. In fact, there isn't any place the universe would fit. The universe did not begin at any point in time. Existence is eternal and the universe is prime. It sounds a bit confusing, but it isn't hard to prove. For time is just the measurement of entities that move. For something must exist at all before a thing can act. The universe, the universe existed all along. Theologists may argue, but theologists are wrong. Consciousness created or acted as its nurse. No consciousness existed prior to the universe. So means what exists, coherence or confusion? Is what we call existence real or only an illusion?
existence is an axiom upon which all else rests, regardless of who says so and regardless who protests. The existence is self-evident, which simply means you know it. It's verified ostensively, which simply means you show it. It cannot be refuted. It's irrational to try it. The man who doubts existence has to use it to deny it. <laughs> existence is objective, independent of perceiver, independent of evader, independent of believer. To be is to be something, to be real and specific. No thing can be and not be, to be strictly scientific. All nature's laws are absolute. All entities obey them. All entities are what they are. No wishing will gainsay them. See, an entity can only act according to its nature. There aren't any miracles in nature's nomenclature. So existence is identity. That ought to summarize it. And this implies that consciousness is what identifies it. Consciousness perceives that which exists, and nothing more. Perceiving what exists is what a consciousness is for. Awareness is an axiom. The moron who poo-poos it must face the same dilemma. To deny it, he must use it. <clears throat> so existence then and consciousness are true and absolute. Of anything we say or do, these two are at the root. I can see for myself, I can taste, smell, hear, and feel what is
Thank you. Hold it quietly. <laughs> the second fundamental question asks, how do you know? This means, what means does man possess for knowing what is so? Is reason man's exclusive means of gaining information? Or can he know by feelings? Or by mystic revelation? Well, as human beings, we depend on knowledge to survive. If not your own, then someone else's thoughts keep you alive. Emotions aren't knowledge. They just make you want to move. And faith is just believing what you don't know how to prove. <laughs> so reason is the faculty from which all thought commences. It integrates material provided by the senses. The senses gather data and transmit it to the brain. In simplest form, sensations are of pleasure or of pain. And sensations are retained by means of mental integration. And this stage is called perception. More complex than mere sensation, we share this stage with animals. It's virtually static because this integration is completely automatic. Man's level is conceptual. Requiring his volition. This means that he must choose to use awareness for cognition. Nothing forces man to think on every new occasion. He makes that choice himself each time. It's thinking or evasion. The choice to think or not to think is man's prerogative. This doesn't change his nature, though. He needs to think to live. And all thought is done with concepts which identify a fact. To know what's so, man must be sure his concepts are exact. And since man is not infallible, and man is not omniscient, he needs to find a way to make his thinking most efficient. Logic is the method that gives thought the right restriction. It puts it to a simple test. It's called non-contradiction. See, a contradiction can't exist, or life would just be terror. To hold a contradiction is to know you've made an error. We cannot eat and have our cake. No matter how we pray, it's either or, and facts are facts. The law is, A is A. Want to see it again? <laughs> One day, while they were passing round the bottle, said Plato to his pupil Aristotle, this world that we perceive 
is a world of make-believe. <laughs> what we see does not exist. It's a reflection. But Aristotle thought a lot and chortled, what a lot of rot. This twaddle needs rebuttal and rejection. You mean that this potato is not a real potato? For all we know, it might be a tomato. Plato. A is A, it isn't B, it cannot be, it's A. You see, the nature of reality decrees that A is A. A is A, it isn't B, I cannot make an A a B by wishing it could be a B. It doesn't work that way. Even if an A is made of B and C, or if an A and B combine to make a C, an A is still an A and not a B or C, any more than one is two, or two is three. See? A is A, it isn't B. If A were just the same as B, there'd be no need to call it B, so let it be an A. He was furious. A is A, it's common sense. I shudder at the consequence if people tuned their instruments believing A was B. <laughs> a is A and B is B, a thing to be an entity must have its own identity, to be or not to be. D, 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 finding what is fact and what is fiction. D, D, depends upon the law of contradiction. We contradict. We contradict the meaning of identity when we say a thing can be and yet not be. See? <sighs> a is A and B is B and speaking philosophically, say they're both the same, I'll knock you flat. In is in and out is out and thin is thin and stout is stout and truth is truth and doubt is doubt and truth. There is no doubt about it. A is A and B. Question, so, what should you do? <coughs> is question number three. See, philosophy's development is something like a tree. The roots are metaphysics, to provide a firm foundation. And the trunk, epistemology, provides substantiation. And ethics is the branches and the leaves in which it's dressed. And in this way, morality depends upon the rest. Okay then, what about the soil? <laughs> I hear your silent query. The soil is... <laughs> the soil is what gives rise to any philosophic theory. You're not going anywhere, are you? Oh. Okay. <laughs> Life's the only thing that has to face alternatives. An organism dies unless an organism lives. I thought of that. <laughs> Matter 
sometimes changes forms, but cannot cease to be. It's only life itself that comes without a guarantee. Remember, when we speak of life, we mean by this abstraction a process of self-generated, self-sustaining action. An organism's nature will prescribe what it should do. And living is the value which its actions must pursue. All plants act on this standard. And all animals have sensed it. The good is that which furthers life. The evil <laughs> acts against it. <laughs> See, a plant can automatically do only what it should. An, an, an animal has automatic knowledge of what's good. But man possesses... Mm, <laughs> possesses free will. He can act as his destroyer. Let's face it, man can boo-boo. <laughs> And he often needs a lawyer. <laughs> so, <laughs> morality does not apply to everything that is. It rests on man's volition, since the choice to think is his. Mm. Now, of all the values man can hold, these three must reign supreme. One is reason, One is purpose, and as any fool can very plainly see, one is self-esteem. Broke the meter, but what the hell. <laughs> Reason is the tool with which you strive to reach your goal, and purpose is the goal itself. It plays the central role. And self-esteem supplies the why. Your self-respect, unswerving. It's your profound conviction that your life is worth preserving. Take that one over. And these values have to be achieved, and virtue must achieve them. The seven virtues are what man should do. Take them or leave them. The first is rationality, to guide him on his course. Man lives by means of logic, not by whim, or faith, or force. Independence means that truth is yours alone to find. It's your responsibility to live by your own mind. I ran out of purple. Integrity means thought plus action minus any breach. To act on your convictions and to practice what you preach. Sloppiness is... <laughs> I'll work a little hard on that. Honesty means only what is so is worth believing. It means no values may be gained by faking or deceiving. Justice means you neither seek nor grant unearned rewards. 
It means men must be traders and no longer serfs and lords and hostages. <laughs> Productiveness is what you do to maintain your existence. Achievement is your purpose. And achievement means persistence. And pride is your devotion to yourself, your moral worth. You have to earn the right to be your favorite thing on earth. The most important thing to me is me. That's why it's true. If that's what's so, and how we know, then that's what we should do. has a philosophy few of them make any sense 
politics stem from philosophy. Here's where the heat is intense. Communists clearly communicate. Everyone's wealth is to share. Socialist, fascist, a welfare state. None of them plays laissez-faire. Life requires freedom and property. Men must not be parasites. Men need a government properly. Only for guarding these rights. Both wings are singing their songs to me. Our lives belong to the state. to other philosophies Learn how a culture declines Notice how other philosophies Ask you to give up your mind Specious and vicious dichotomies Split mind and body apart Do it yourself, kit Lobotomies Hitting the mind Versus heart Feelings Must rule as the hack advice No need To question their source Reason they say we must Sacrifice Don't think Just follow the force Some people stick to the platitudes Sorting the rights from the wrongs Some philosophical attitudes Come from our popular song See if any of these have been theme songs of yours Love thy neighbor Be wise, be smart Make someone happy Put a little love in your heart I'm always chasing rainbow The best things in life are free I got the sun in the morning and the moon at night Say la vie, let it be Life is just a bowl of cherries Who cares? I don't care what the world needs now is love, sweet love, and all in love is fair. I got plenty of nothing, and it all belongs to you. Everything I have is yours. What now, my love? What'll I do? Is that all there is? <laughs> what kind of fool am I? How deep is the ocean? How high is the sky? That's life. That's what people say. We're poor little sheep who have lost our way. <laughs> but I'm glad to be unhappy. I got a right to sing the blues We're lost out here in the stars Why was I born? Born to lose <laughs> Did I ever really live? What's it all about? The answers, my friend, are flowing in the wind. <laughs> Nobody knows you when you're down and out.
Street. When you're down and out, lift up your head and shout. There's gonna be a great day. So wrap your troubles in dreams and dream your troubles away. Forget your troubles, come on, get happy. When everything goes wrong, you gotta accept to wait the positive and start off each day with a song. I believe in music. Smile, be a clown. Everything is beautiful, but don't let it get you down. <laughs> Smile, though your heart is aching, <laughs> and the sun comes shining through. Put on a happy face. Everything's coming up, roses for me and for you. I want to live till I die. I got a lot of living to do. And when you wish upon a star, your dreams come true. No man is an island. How little we know. Then I know why mm, I believe. How do I know the Bible tells me so? Climb every mountain, for every stream. Look for the silver lining. So what have we determined? <laughs> In the last analysis, we started with three questions. The three answers go like this. Reality is what is so. And reason knows reality. And so what we should do is Choose a rational morality. Any other course will only lead us to destruction. And that is my philosophy, at least an introduction. It all may sound too simple. Apple pie and motherhooding. That apple pie is the entree. But the proof... <laughs>
Why don't we take about 20 minutes and then I'll come back and take off our clothes and have an orgy. writing it by people who were supposed to know that it was not possible to entertain people with this material, that uh, it was uh, going to be too over their heads, or they said the song title was, it was entirely out of place, you can't do that in a show like this. And uh, I think, I, I think this is probably the most exciting night of my life. 